Uh, hello YouTube viewers and subscribers. Today I've got another very unique engine I picked up today from a local modeler. And it is this. A Webra T480 engine. Now, like I said, I picked this up today from a local modeler. And unfortunately, it came to me just like this. I mean, I didn't have the prop stub on here. I put that on to rotate it through. But it did not have an intake manifold or a carb, which is rather unfortunate. It would be most unfortunate for many people, but since I have a Weber T460, it's not quite as unfortunate for me because I can put this carb on this engine and run it. So I'm not totally dead there. I think it'll fit. Looks like looks like it should fit fine so yeah we're good there so this engine looks like it's got fairly low runtime although I don't know it, it feels like it's got really good compression it's hard to tell about the runtime from just looking at the the rotary valve there but there was some elongation of this hole and it's been mounted so this engine is definitely a used engine and what I want to do here is I actually want to take a look inside now this exhaust I believe this exhaust or the muffler is stock but uh, as sometimes happens I was kind of looking this engine over and kind of doing the compression and rotating this prop through and stuff and I touched the nipple just touched the nipple that was actually on this and it came off so, and it wouldn't really thread in there, so I don't know what was the deal there. It's almost like the hole had been wallered out or something. But uh, off camera, obviously, I uh, just kind of reamed that hole just a hair and just threaded in this new brass nipple that I picked up off of eBay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a look inside this engine, or at least open up the back cover and take the head off. But it's got really, really good compression. In fact, before I put this prop stub on here, I couldn't even turn it over by hand. Um, the thing that's weird is that usually with engines of similar displacement, they just, uh, you know, bore out the sleeve and, you know, make a bigger piston. But that's really not the case with the Weber T480 and the T460, which I've got right here, in that this is the 60 and this is the 80 and you can see they're pretty much completely different engines I mean there's definitely a size difference there I think you can, I've got it lined up there you can see there's definitely a size difference and the other thing that's sort of unfortunate about that for me is that I have a spare belt for this engine but I don't have a spare belt for this. I was hoping that they were going to be basically the same engine, just bore it out slightly. But that's not the case. So now I'm, I haven't looked inside here yet, but I'm hoping that the belt is fine because I don't have a replacement for that. And obviously, this engine doesn't have a belt. It's pretty useless. Almost as useless as if you didn't have a carb and an intake for it. So. Now I know for a fact that when I take this back cover off, I'm going to lose this gasket. I'm pretty damn sure that gasket's just going to get destroyed. But that's okay because the same thing happened with this engine. And I just used my Permatex Gray Moto Seal 1 gasket maker uh, on this and it's never leaked at all. And it's not like that gasket is a thickness requirement. To, for spacing or anything is basically just a seal so I'll be okay to use the Permatex moto seal on this but I really want to open it up as you can see the difference in the colors of these engines this one I had put through the ultrasonic and cleaned up real nice I'm really seriously considering doing the same thing with this engine so that it looks all nice and clean now another thing I'm pretty certain of is that this isn't just going to want to come off. It didn't on the other. I actually had to go out there with a wood block and a rubber mallet and tap this thing to get it to come free. So I'm sure that I'm going to have to do the same thing there with this too. In fact, uh, I want to go do that before I take the head off. 
Uh, let's see if this is the right size. Yeah, let's go ahead and take this belt cover off first, though. Okay, so there was the original sealant on this. Belt looks pliable. It's got a little moisture on there, which is a good thing. Now, I learned from my last Weber that this sealant on here is normal and from the factory, so that's a good thing. Okay, so that didn't take but a light little wrap there with the mallet. And yeah, there's a lot of gasket material there. Let's zoom in here a little bit and take a look at this. Uh, I may end up having to replace these bearings. I mean, they don't feel bad, but they look kind of nasty. Let's uh, continue on here. Okay, so with these head screws, they are different lengths, if I recall correctly. So these are the ones on the short one that were more recessed. So you can see the head screw difference there. Now this should just come right off. Wow. <laughs> wow. Check that out. Um, so here's the inside. <laughs> I don't know why I'm covering this up just because I was kind of shocked when I just looked inside there. You can see this rotary valve looks clean as a whistle and here's some of that sealant. But look at the top of this piston. Look at that. I don't think there's a gasket there. There might be on the side of the, in the head. But that thing looks extremely, extremely low time. And this thing had monster compression like I said. So, that's really kind of a interesting thing. Now here's the other kicker with this is this sleeve has got to come up and that's gonna I'm certain that's gonna require some heat. You gotta pull the sleeve out and then you gotta extract the wrist pin which can be interesting to say the least. So I'm gonna have to go outside and heat this guy up. this stuff off. One thing I want to try and do here is see if I can go ahead and pull this prop drive off. I might end up having to heat this whole engine up too though. There's a Woodruff key in here. Let me see how much trouble that's going to give me. It's giving me no trouble whatsoever. As you can see I'm just kind of doing it by hand. And there's our key. Definitely want to make sure we don't lose that. Yeah, front bearing looks kind of nasty. Okay, so now is the point where I need to go out and heat this head up, get this sleeve kind of hot at least get the sleeve pushed out of here. Okay, well unfortunately I have heated the living crap out of this thing. I don't even really want to get my hands too close to it. I had this belt pulled down and covered with my of gloves so it didn't get hot at all or at least tried not to. I cannot get that sleeve to move at all. Now, I've heated it three different times really really hot. Use some bamboo skewer sticks with a flat end to try and push that sleeve up and out of there and it's not budging at all. The only thing I can think to do now is put the thing back together and do a run and hopefully running it will get everything kind of loosened up enough in there so that then I can disassemble it and, and clean it. So I'm gonna have to let this thing cool and then I'll put it back together and I guess we're gonna have to do well, it's too late for a box to the bench run, but we're going to have to do a, an initial run on this engine before I'm going to be able to service it any further. 
or do any cleaning because obviously without uh, getting that sleeve out I can't get the piston out can't get the piston out, can't get the connecting rod off, can't get the connecting rod off, can't get the crankshaft out, can't replace the bearing. So there's just kind of one of those things. So I'm going to let this thing whew, cool down, reassemble it, and I guess uh, the next step is just going to be to run it and hope I can disassemble it then.